It was only a few weeks ago that former U.S. diplomat Peter Galbraith was discharged from his role as the U.N.'s second highest ranking official in Afghanistan. The dismissal was issued after Galbraith claims that his boss had covered up fraud in the country's recent elections, allegations that were vehemently denied. Now, in a separate case of alleged corruption, the accuser has become the accused. The allegations relate to another of America's theaters of war, Iraq, but once again they are vehemently denied. A former staff member of the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations and the U.S.'s first ambassador to Croatia, Peter Galbraith maintains a special interest in ethnic minorities. Even after resigning from the U.S. government, he was a vocal advocate of an autonomous Kurdistan, a case he championed in his book, The End of Iraq. And he claims he advised Kurdish leaders seeking to secure ownership and control of the region's oil resources during discussions over the Iraqi constitution in 2005. Yet he now stands accused of having had a vested interest in Kurdish independence. On the 10th of October, a Norwegian business newspaper printed allegations that Peter Galbraith's company, Porcupine LP, had business dealings with Norwegian oil company DNO. The article stated that, in secret, senior diplomat Peter Galbraith has economic interests in a Kurdish oil field. DNO was the first to strike oil in Iraq's northern Kurdish region. The Norwegian company now owns a major stake in Kurdish oil field Tauke. In June this year, the company began exporting this extremely profitable resource, signing contracts with international companies, despite objections from Baghdad. It was only after recent delays in its operations that the links between DNO and Peter Galbraith surfaced. Galbraith has denied any wrongdoing, and there is no suggestion that he has done anything illegal. He has admitted to having a contractual relationship with DNO, but insists that there was no conflict of interest between his business activities and consultations with the Kurdish government. But rights to oil revenues remain a key sticking point in negotiations between the central government in Iraq and the KRG, with foreign ownership at the heart of the matter. And foreign ownership of the region's oil fields is perhaps the most controversial element of all. Nashwa Nasreddin for Inside Iraq. I am now joined from Oslo by Terry Erikstad, a financial news editor at Norwegian business daily Dagens Naringsliv, and from London by Sabah Al Mukhtar, president of Arab Lawyers Association in London. And we were also supposed to be joined by Mohammed Ihsan, Minister for Extra-Regional Affairs of the KRG. But unfortunately, we were informed at the last minute that he fell sick and cannot join the program. Sabah and Terry, welcome to Inside Iraq. Terry, let me start with you. Were you surprised to discover that the name of Mr. Peter Galbraith, the former U.S. ambassador to uh, Croatia and a leading figure in Washington, he had a 5% stake in the DNO? Yes, indeed. We were very much surprised because it all started with a Norwegian company being fined by the uh, Oslo Stock Exchange. And uh, we started working on this case as an ordinary uh, conflict between a company on the Stock Exchange and the Stock Exchange. And it ended up with Peter Galbraith owning uh, uh, oil interest or having oil interest in Kurdistan. That was very surprising for us, indeed. Sabah? Who is Peter Galbraith? Set the situation for us. Galbraith is a, is a professor of uh, international politics in, in the USA. He was a, an ambassador in a variety of capacities in Croatia and Afghanistan. He was advisor to the U.S. government. He's a man who was being paid a salary by the government of the United States of America. He was at the same time being paid a salary by the Kurdish government as an advisor. And at the same time, he was taking money from a company which is going to apply for oil in, in Iraq. He has uh, been instrumental in uh, assisting the Americans and the Kurds to produce a constitution for Iraq, which is a designer-make country, which is a failed state, to install a government and a regime there that has been looking after the interest of, uh, of Mr. Galbraith. And this reminds us and reminds the listeners and the viewers that this is again the history repeating itself. In the past, there was a Mr. Golbenkian, Mr. 5%, during the Ottoman Empire who had 5% of the oil of Iraq. And now we have this man having a 5% interest in the Kurdish uh, area in Tawuk field in particular. But now he, they seem to have turned the table on him. That's why he's on an arbitration cause with them. 
If that is the case, Terry, explain to me how come in a very lengthy explanation and justification by the Minister of Natural Resources of the KRG, Mr. Ashti Horami, on the website of the KRG.org, he mentioned it all, what happened, the genesis of the story of DNO and its operations in Kurdistan for almost five, six pages, and yet the name of Peter Galbraith has not been mentioned even once. How do you explain that? Because uh, Peter Galbraith was a secret partner uh, with the Norwegian company, uh, you mentioned uh, DNO International, and uh, this company had two secret partners in their uh, exploration in Kurdistan. Uh, it, uh, the, the interest of Mr. Galbraith was hidden behind a company, na company named Porcupine, and this porcupine is incorporated in uh, one of the states of uh, the USA, Delaware. And uh, it was very difficult to know about his identity. We found it through um, uh, the company registry. And uh, it was all hidden. It was... Um, um, it's, he is in a conflict with the DNO uh, because uh, the, uh, the Kurdish government did not recognize his interests when uh, the new oil law was applied to this uh, uh, field, the Toke field in Kurdistan. And he is now in an arbitration process with DNO. Uh, and it was all kept secret until we found out the, the, the identity of the company in this arbitration process and the man behind it. Mr. Galbraith. Uh, the, the Kurdish government say that they know nothing about it, but that's very difficult to understand. Indeed, it is very difficult to understand, Sabah al-Mukhtar. If you were Peter Galbraith, here is a man who spent the better part of almost four years consulting and advising the KRG. He shepherded them through the lengthy process of the constitution writing. He inserted some very important clauses to the benefit of the KRG regarding the relationship between Baghdad and Erbil, regarding the oil law, regarding the Peshmerga, regarding their territorial authorization. And yet, at the very last moment, they squeezed him out and they crossed him. And the 5% that he was banking on never materialized. Well, I think uh, this is what uh, you have a, when you have a dispute between the, th the 40 thieves of Baghdad, that's what we end up with. You end up with disclosures that I think this is going to run a little more. Uh, Galbraith at the present moment has a problem with the uh, KRG, but I think within the KRG itself there are a variety of individuals who may have interest, vested interest, who may have conflict of interest, and that is part of the problem. But to go back to what Galbraith did, in the Constitution he is the one who has instigated the idea that a federation is set up in Iraq, but based on ethnicity, which is not the concept of federal government. He has in, uh, encouraged the Kurds and insisted on having the local government having priority over the federal government. He has given the local government the final say. He's given the oil rights to the uh, regional government rather than the federal government. He has uh, assisted them in drafting a constitution which by any stretch of imagination could not be accepted as a proper constitution to the extent that there is Article 142 of the Constitution which called for a revision and a review of that Constitution within four months, which until now they have failed to do. He, they, uh, he assisted them in working on the idea what's called the land grab, i.e. taking areas which were not within the regional government of Kurdistan to be part of Kurdistan so that he can have the oil. He has encouraged them to have the uh, 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 the type of contracts that he signed with them, but then subsequently the problem between the federal government and the regional government stopped that contract from going on. And I think for reasons which I don't know, uh, there is, they, they have fallen out. Having uh, uh, paved the way for them to set up this uh, arrangement, he now stands to lose the money. But I think he's a man who has been working on conflict of interest on a variety of levels, from the USA to Iraq to the politics.
to the uh, Kurdish uh, uh, government and at the same time working for a company which is going to contract with the Kurdish government. And this is an extreme case of conflict of interest, which I think it tantamounts to an illegal act, but this is a matter for the U.S. to deal with.